Hey dudes and dudettes, it's Simon Hurley. Welcome back to another video. We got the same shirt on, but it's a different video. I just recently did a video about the Karen Brush Marker Pros. These are a marker that is new to me. I have been loving them, and a lot of you guys were in the comments as well. But a lot of you guys wanted to see a comparison between the Zig Clean Color Real Brush Pens and these Karen Brush Markers. Let's get into it. All right, so in my past video, I talked about the best cardstock to use is Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock. I find that they both blend really nicely on this, and I'll have it linked down below so you guys can get the best results with either marker that you purchase. All right, so let's start out with the design of the marker. With the Karen Brush Marker Pros, they are a little bit shorter of a barrel. I'm not quite sure if that means less ink inside because you can't really see inside of the Zig markers, is that you're able to see exactly how much liquid is left in your Karen markers, which I think is kind of brilliant. I've had these Zigs for a lot longer than the Karen markers, and you can't really see how much is left inside. One other thing that I like about the packaging of the Karen markers is that really brightly colored lid shows you exactly what color it is when it's sitting in its package or in a cup or anything like that. With these Zig markers, it's got a clear lid for every single one, and I actually had to glue on swatches on the top so that it's much easier to see. That took me a long time to do. I like that the Karen has really nice bright colored packaging so you know exactly what color you're grabbing. But the real difference between these markers is the difference in the tip. And that's what I really fell in love with with these Karen markers. It's got a lot thicker of a nib than the clean brush pen up here, but this one is a real brush. So let me show you this really quickly. You can see with this brush pen, you have a real brush there. I think you guys can see those bristles on that surface. It's like you're painting with a like watercolor brush. So I can go in and do my calligraphy still. I think if you're really good at painting with a brush, these might be good markers for you, but sometimes I find that I don't have enough control with the actual brush nib of this marker. Now when I go in with the Karen Brush Marker Pros, the one thing I fell in love with is this like Copic-like, it's like a silicone tip on there. So it's not like a felt marker that's going to fall apart after a little while, it's got a much sturdier tip to it. But what this means is I'm able to really easily go in and get super thin lines, so I can go in here and get lots of detail, or I can go in with the side of the marker and get super thick lines as well. I also found with these markers, I can scribble out the color faster and get a nice saturated amount, whereas I found that's one thing that I struggled with over the years with the Zig Clean Color. You get a little bit more streakiness in there because it's a real brush and it doesn't apply the ink as smooth. So I've let the ink sit on the surface for a little while and I'm going to go in with these markers and just test out what they're going to do when they react with water. So one thing that I really like about these Karen markers is like I showed in the last video, they water out and they don't really show the strokes where that marker was, which is something that I really appreciate in a brush marker. Then I'll go in with the Zig and do the same thing. And it blends out very similarly. Again, you really can't see where the strokes were in that marker, which is something that I really like. Now I do have to say, with the Zigs, I think it kind of maintained its brightness of the color all the way through. Like you get a pretty even watercolor all the way through when I added water, whereas with the Karen marker, you get more of a sharp defined edge where you touch that color that's a little bit darker, and then it kind of fades out that color. It depends on what you're going for, whether you want a more solid color when you water it out, or whether you want more of a blend. For me, if I was coloring the center of a flower, I think I might actually prefer this because then the center would be the darkest and then you get a nice shading effect with just one color. But that part's just my opinion. It's kind of up to you with what you like better with that. Now let's test how these Karen markers blend together without any water. This is a really important fact to me, so if I'm on the go and I don't want to use water and I just want to color, this is a good way to do that. So I'm going to go in with an amber color and you can see just how much ink that puts out. I love that. That is one of my favorite things about these markers and why I originally liked them in the first place. Then I'll go in with a little bit of red and blend this together in the center there. You can already see that new color that it's creating and if I wanted to, I can go back and bring that red a little bit more in with that orange color. But you can definitely see a nice blend on the surface of the cardstock there. You get a cool orange in between and it wasn't really a struggle to blend at all. Someone in my last video with the Karen markers were saying that this is more of a saturated watercolor and you should water it out. 
I like the look of this very saturated color blended together, but of course, to blend them together, you could totally water them out a little bit in between to get that nice watered down color if you like that. Now let's do the same thing with these zig markers. I'll go in with an orange color, add that down. You don't get as crisp of edges with that brush, but sometimes that doesn't really matter when you're just coloring an image in. And then I'll go in with the red and do the same thing and blend that out. You get a little bit more of a solid line there, but I also went back with the orange with this one. So I'll do that same thing there. I'm going to wipe it off to the side to get rid of any red and then go back in and keep blending it out. Okay, so as this one is drying, it looked a little bit more harsh right there, but as it's drying, it's just kind of sinking into the cardstock and giving me a nice blend as well. So I'd say both of them do a good job at blending. They both give, again, different edges with those different tips, but they do a good job at blending nicely together. Now, one thing that I liked about the zig markers is you could do techniques like this. I'm going to try this with the Karen markers where you touch the tips together like this and then they'll bleed a little bit of that red ink into this orange marker and then I can go down and color. So let's see if this does that same thing. I'll go in here, start coloring it out. It didn't really add much red, it just did it kind of right at the edge though. Let's see if I add a little bit of pressure to it to see if that'll transfer the ink a little bit better. All right, and that definitely did. You get a little bit more red when you apply that pressure there. Now I'll do the same thing with the zig markers. And what I like about these brushes is they're a little bit easier able to kind of transfer that color together, which I really like. And I'm not usually worried about them staining too much, which is really nice. So I'll go in here with that. You can see that was just a little bit of time and there is a lot of red ink inside of that orange marker to kind of spread and blend out. So that's cool. That's one thing that I liked all right, now let's go in and color a stamp because this is something that I like to do is some watercolor stamping. So I'm gonna go in first on the top with the Karen brush markers and I wanna see if these tips are going to kind of wear down by adding them to stamps. I'm going to go in here and color onto there. And I like to use the side of any marker that has a nib like this. I'll go in on the side and it didn't seem to do anything to the tip of that marker which is nice. I know with felt tip markers, sometimes they can kind of damage the tip when you're going into color. But again, I think these are more of a silicone based tip because they don't seem to be doing any damage and they're really holding up nicely to any bending. And like I keep saying, this is just applying an awesome amount of ink on there, which is super nice when I'm doing watercolor stamping or things like that. It just applies down tons of color. So I know this is gonna be really nice and saturated once it's finished. And then on the bottom one, I'll choose very similar colors. I'm going in with the zig pens. And one thing you don't have to worry about these is too much is the tip of them because they're not going to damage as much on this rubber stamp. You still wanna be careful that you're not just going in and wiping the brush all willy nilly because that could ruin some of the bristles in there. So just again, kind of working on the edge of the marker and bringing in some color here. All right, so now let's go in. I'm going to give one spray to both sides of those. And then I'll bring in my Bristol cardstock and I'll stamp it down this stamp. So giving both of them good pressure. And this is one of the techniques I love to do with markers, so I'm excited to see the results. So here is the Karen markers and here is how those zig markers look. So both of them had a couple spots that skipped just a little bit there. That could have been just pressure on my part, but this one seemed to have a little bit more. They seem to have similar results, but this one just seemed to be a little bit more juicy. You can kind of see those colors pooling a little bit there um, with all of that vibrant color that was applied to the stamp. But I'll let you guys make your own decision. I'm gonna hold it up here and you can kind of see how both of those stamped with a little bit of water in the markers themselves. Now let's do just normal watercoloring with these markers. So I'm gonna take a little bit of the Karen marker at top here to create a little bit of a palette. And I'll do the same thing with the Karen marker in this orange color. And same thing with the Zig markers. I'll apply a little bit of a palette at the bottom. This isn't going to be really how they color, but more just the ink that's inside of them and how it reacts with water. I think they probably both should have pretty similar results here. I'll apply a little bit of water to both of these Karen colors first, and then we can start applying them down onto our surface. So I had a little bit of orange in that red. But you can see that one really waters down. Like I said earlier, I think it loses a lot of saturation when you add tons of water. So that's why, especially with these Karen markers, I like to 
color with them straight and add a little bit of water if necessary to blend. All right, then let's go in with the zig markers. And you can already tell they definitely are more vibrant and saturated. That orange is pretty similar, but that red is undeniably a lot more saturated. Now this one, given, is a little bit more of a pinkish red. I think if I had to find a marker in the Karen set that worked closely, it would probably be the more magenta red. Let's see if I bring that in, if it's a little bit more of a solid, vibrant color. So now I think you can see they're a little bit more muted, a little bit more sophisticated of colors, which I actually tend to like when I'm going in and coloring, say like a flower or something like that. I think these colors have a little bit more of those tones, um, but of course if you want bright and vibrant saturated colors, I think those zigs are gonna really do you well. So that's also something to keep in mind. If you're not going to use a ton of water with these, I kind of love these Karens for those saturated colors. So I just finished coloring next to them. So these are what the original color looks like without being watered down from the three Karens. And then these are the Zig markers and what they look like without any water. One last thing I wanted to test out with these markers is how they apply to a surface that is wet. So let's say I've already been coloring on this surface. It's got a little bit of water on there because I've already gone in and done some blending, right? So let's go in with these um, Zig markers. Let's go in and just do our blending. You can see the color is definitely wicking away, but it's still adding color to the surface. One thing that I noticed with working with these is if you do go into water, you have to scribble off to the side because that water gets lifted back up into that brush and you can see the color is becoming a little lighter there. So I always want to wipe it off after you're done. And then let's go in with the Kareen in the orange color here. You can see that one applies as well. I think it applies a little bit less smooth to that um, cardstock that already is a little bit wet. It seems to maybe be pilling apart the cardstock, or it just gives a little bit of a texture there. It doesn't seem to be damaging it too much. So I'd say you can do it with both. This one will give you a little bit more of a smooth look if you do it though. So the zigs are better at painting on top of an already wet background. All right guys, so that was my review of the Karen markers and the zig markers. And also, I believe both of these you can buy individually. So if one color dries out in your set, you can purchase a marker individually to replace it instead of having to buy the Will set again. I'm not going to pick these markers for you, but I think for me, the ones that I like the most are the Karens right now, and the reason I do is just because I like the tip on it. It's similar to a Copic marker if that's something you've used, and I think it's a great tip that'll hold up longer over time, and I like the juiciness that they apply as well, whereas I have a little bit more of a hard time with the real brush that's inside of these markers. Although they're fun because of that, um, I have a little bit of a hard time getting the details in my coloring that I want. But in the end, it's all up to you guys and what you think will work best for you. So be sure to leave me a comment down below which marker you like best, if you have both, or which one you want to look into trying. Um, I hope I did both of these markers justice today in comparing and reviewing them. And if I have videos, I believe I have videos using both of these, so I'll link those down below in the description so you can see them more in action of just coloring images and making cards. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Be sure to hit that subscribe button down below to never miss another card making and crafting video. And I'll see you guys very, very soon. Have a great day. Bye, guys.